Hello guys, today welcome to another video lecture in ACC 221 Intermediate Accounting 3. And in this video lecture, guys, we will be discussing about related parties, including related party transactions and related party disclosures. By the way, once again, I am your lecturer for this subject, Sir Zhao, and to discuss our topic for today, let us discuss first the concept of who are related parties and what are these um, parties? May it be individual or entities? So when we talk about related parties, these are um, parties related to a reporting entity. And if a reporting entity has a transaction from these types of entity, whether individual or entity, are required to be disclosed. So as to who are the entities which are to be disclosed, so they shall be um, based on the definition of the related party. All right. So a related party transaction, it is a transfer of resources or obligations between related parties regardless of whether a price is charged or not. So again, Related party, these are parties considered related if one party has number one or letter A, the ability to control the other party. So when we talk about control, it is the power over the investee or the power to govern the financial and operating policies of an entity so as to obtain benefits. So a particular so if a particular corporation or entity has the power to control a particular subsidiary or a particular investee, then um, that party is considered as a related party. And every transaction between those parties no, will be or should be required to be disclosed. Aside from um, parties who have control, those also who have exercised significant influence over the party are also considered related party. So speaking of significant influence, it is the power to participate in the financial and operating policy of an entity, okay? But not control over those policies. So in your previous discussions, guys, in intermediate accounting, you have actually considered um, identifying who are entities with significant influence. So, according to the standard, um, a significant influence can be considered if there is 20% or more of the voting power of a particular investee. So, if there is 20% or more of the investing power of the investee, it is presumed that the investor has significant influence over that particular entity. Unless it can be clearly demonstrated that it is, it is not the case. No? Take note that all, there are also times where an entity did not actually own 20% or more of the voting power, but they still exercise um, significant influence. All right? So beyond the 20% threshold of ownership, the existence of significant influence can still be evidenced by maybe representation in the board of directors, participation in policy-making process, materials transaction between the investor and the investee, interchange of managerial personnel and provision of essential technical information. So even if the entity has no ownership, more than 20% of the voting shares of particular entity or investee, but as long as they have um, the power in participation, the power to participate in, in the mentioned activities earlier, then therefore they are considered to be a party with significant influence. And lastly, letter C, those with joint control over the entity. So speaking of joint control, the control is the, is the contractually agreed sharing of control over an economic activity. So as long as um, a particular entity has letter A, control number two, letter B, significant influence, or letter C, joint control over the entity, then therefore, they are considered to be related party, okay? And if a particular entity has a transaction from those entity, those entity, no, whatever transaction may that include, whether it includes a price charge or not, 
there is a required disclosure. Okay? So, why is it that there is a required disclosure from transactions between these related parties? Okay? As we all know, these parties are related parties. And since they are related parties, there might be a conflicting interest resting between these entities. And therefore, it's required to be disclosed and be informed to the users of the financial statements. Okay? So, we are, um, we have here examples of related parties. So, number one, we have your associates. So, associates are entity which the investor has significant influence. Okay? So, example, ABC Company is an associate of XYZ Company. So, and that means um, both parties, okay, so si, subsidiar, uh, uh, si, si um, parent company will be reporting whatever its transaction together with the associate no, of the entity. Another are those entities that directly or indirectly through one or more intermediaries control or are controlled by or under the common control with the reporting entity. Related party includes also those key management personnel. So key management personnel are those persons having authority and responsibility for planning, directing, and controlling the activities of the entity directly or indirectly, including any executive director or non-executive director. So um, this actually um, is an example of an individual related party. So those um, related to um, key management personnel of a particular corporation, including the directors, may it be executive or non-executive directors. Aside from key management personnel, key ventures also in a joint venture is considered as a related party. A joint venture, take note, includes the subsidiary or subsidiaries of the joint venture. Okay, so, so that is number four. Number five are our close family members. Close family members of an individual are those family members who may be expected to influence or be influenced by the individual in their dealings with that particular entity. So um, earlier we have discussed key management personnel. So all those close family members of that key management personnel are considered as well as related party of an entity. Okay, so examples of close family members are letter A, individual spouse and children, uh, the, the spouse and the children of the key management personnel, the directors, the CEO, and the lead or the leaders of a particular corporation, the children of the individual's spouse, or dependents of the individual or individual spouse themselves. So they are considered close family members. Individuals owning directly or indirectly an interest in the voting power of the reporting entity that gives them significant influence over the entity in close family members of such individuals. And lastly, guys, those post-employment benefit plans for the benefit of employees of an entity or any entity that is related party to that entity is also considered as a related party. So, lahat ng ito, guys, from the entities two employment benefit plans for the benefit of employees are considered as related parties and whatever are the transactions happening between an entity and from this person or entities should be disclosed properly by the entity all right so this time let's proceed with the examples of related party transactions so a related party transaction is a transfer of resources between related parties regardless of whether a price is charged, no, as mentioned earlier, whether that transaction is free of charge or with charge, it should be properly be um, disclo disclosed by the entity. Past 24, paragraph 20 provides the following examples of related party transactions. So if there are transactions um, similar on the mentioned in the standard, so they are the clear na mga items which are required to be disclosed by the entity. So, number one, purchase and sale of goods. 
Number two, purchase and sales of property and other assets. Rendering or receiving services. Leases. No? Lease between um, whether the entity is on the point of view of the lessor or, or on the point of view of the lessee. Transfer of research and development. License agreement. Finance arrangement including loans and equity contributions in cash or in kind or guarantee in collateral, or settlement of liabilities on behalf of the entity or by the entity on behalf of another party. For example, um, subsidiary, no? subsidiary it, is the, it is the entity who pays for the liability of another subsidiary, or baliktad, si subsidiary ang nagbayad sa liability ni entity. So these are examples of the related party transactions that is to be reported as disclosures in the financial statements okay so what is this related party disclosure so past 24 paragraph 12 requires disclosure of related party relationship where control exists irrespective of whether there have been transactions between the related parties so as what i have mentioned that related party disclosure is important because these parties since they are related parties there might be conflicting interests rests between these two parties and thus required to be disclosed to the shareholders or to any other stakeholders of the entity for their information. As minimum, the disclosures of related party transactions shall include letter A, the amount of transaction if ever there is a charge for the transaction made between the parties, letter B, the amount of outstanding balance, terms and conditions, whether secured or unsecured, and nature of consideration to be provided in the settlement. Okay, for example, it, if it's a liability, so if there are um, a liability made to a related party as of the end of an, a particular accounting period, how much is the remaining outstanding balance of the liability or the remaining outstanding receivable of an entity from a related party? The terms and conditions. So terms and conditions includes the interest that is given to that related party, the terms, the due date, when will it be fully paid, should be clearly stipulated as well in the notes to financial statements under disclosures of related party transactions. It also includes whether um, this liability is secured with an asset or a specific asset or unsecured type of liability. And then letter C, disclosure should also include the allowance for doubtful accounts related to the outstanding balance. So again, since they are related parties, so um, allowance for doubtful accounts related to an outstanding liability by a third party should really be properly be disclosed. Kasi nga, there could be a sort of conflicting interest between these two parties. The expense recognized during the period in respect of doubtful accounts due from related parties are as well um, disclosed in the financial statements or are required to be disclosed in the financial statements. Okay, so this time, proceed tayo sa examples of a related party disclosure. So what are the examples of related party disclosures? So example, we have here Hambalaya Company reported the following remuneration in other payments made to the entity's chief executive officer for the current year. So this one, guys, um, exclusively reports on the compensation made to their chief executive officer. So it includes um, annual salary of 2 million, share options and other share-based payments totaling a million, contributions to retirement and benefit plan for 500,000, and reimbursement of travel expense for business trips for 1.2 million. So how much should be disclosed as compensation to key management personnel? Okay, so obviously, um, it includes the annual salary of 2 million, the share options and other share-based payment as um, share-based compensation, uh, 1 million, and contributions to retirement benefit plan of that executive officer totaling 500,000. So therefore, in the notes to financial statements or in the disclosure, it should be um, reporting a total of 3.5 million compensation for that key management personnel. Okay, so that means that means um, 
key management personnel, compensation should be required to be disclosed, just like this, no? It was actually stated in past 24, paragraph 16, that an entity shall disclose key management personnel compensation in total and for each of the following categories. So, that includes short-term employee benefits, post-employment benefits, for example, retirement pensions, other long-term benefits, termination benefits, and your share-based compensation or share-based transactions like share options. So, in this case, so Hambalaya Company is required to report 3.5 million um, as a related party disclosure, particularly to its key management personnel. Okay? So, this time, let's proceed with the unrelated parties. So, kanina, we have identified who are the related parties. No? So, if they are not related parties, then therefore, they will be considered as unrelated parties. Pero, in particular, um, these are the examples which are to be considered as unrelated parties. So, let number one, two entities simply because they have a director or key management personnel in common, okay? It doesn't mean that, for example, ABC company and XYZ company, there has an interlocking director. For example, um, Juan de la Cruz is a director in ABC company and at the same time, a director of XYZ company. Juan de la Cruz is an interlocking director between these two entities, okay? So, it doesn't mean that there is an interlocking director. Both entities, ABC and XYZ, are already unrelated parties, okay? They are considered as unrelated parties. Number two, providers of finance, trade unions, public utilities, and government agencies in the course of their normal dealings with an entity by virtue of only those dealings. So, for example, um, yung credit institutions, guys, whether it's private or government finances, no, they are considered as unrelated parties because they are mere providers of finances alone. And number three, a single customer or supplier, franchisor, or general agent with whom an entity transacts a significant volume of business merely by virtue of the resulting economic dependence. Okay? Also, it doesn't mean that a particular customer, whether it's an individual customer or, um, you know, um, institutional customer is a great contributor to the sales of an entity is already considered as a related party. Okay, when it's own, it's only it's with, and it's only by virtue of resulting economic dependence, meaning they only depend on you. They doesn't actually um, form part of your of your related parties. So it does not required. It is not required for you to disclose. No. Um, real, uh, transactions related to these parties. And we also have two venturers simply because they share joint control over a joint venture. Okay? So, samples yan ng mga unrelated parties. Okay? So, when does related party disclosure not required? Okay? So, meron bang mga instances where Related party disclosure will not be necessary. Okay? The standard provides that disclosure of related party transactions and outstanding balances in the separate financial statements of a parent, subsidiary, associates, or venture. Okay? There should be a related party disclosure to a separate financial statement of a parent, subsidiary, associate, or venture. So, for example, in case of a consolidated financial statement like ABC Group of Companies, and that ABC Group of Companies includes A Company, B Company, and C Company. All right? The standard mentioned that in the separate financial statements of A Company, B Company, and C Company, as well as the separate um, separate FS of the of the parent company, no, the standard has provided that disclosure is required. Okay? Disclosure is required. Alright? Pero, in terms of consolidated financial statement of the group, when we talk about consolidated financial statement of the group, meaning all of the transactions, all of the financial statements, 
of the parent and all other subsidiaries and all other subsidiaries will be combined or will be consolidated. So that's the time where related party disclosures are not, you know, required to be disclosed. Pero when an entity reports on its um, on its individual capacity, no, on their capacity as a separate separate entity, then they are required to uh, present related party disclosure. Pero when it's on a ano, on a consolidated case, no, on a consolidated financial statements, then re related party disclosures might not be required. All right. Another is um, your pricing policies for related party transactions. So accounting recognition of a transfer of resources is normally based on agreed upon between the parties. So between unrelated parties, the price is an arm's length price. So between related parties, there may be a degree of flexibility in the price setting process that is not present between unrelated parties. So obviously, guys, because they are unrelated, uh, they are related parties, then their pricing strategy might differ from transactions involving an entity and an unrelated party transaction. All right. So, for example, if um, they would be flexible enough to give lower um, markup when, in terms to transactions related to a re related to a related party, all right. So that should be disclosed under pricing policies. Okay. So, Pass Twenty Four actually did not provide for the measurement of related party transactions. However, a variety of methods is used to price transactions between related parties. So again, a related party could have a flexible pricing method or pricing strategy to a transaction involving another related party. The following are the most common methods that is used to price transactions if it involves a related party. So letter A is your uncontrolled price method. So talking about uncontrolled price method, this sets the price by reference to comparable goods sold in an economically comparable market to a buyer unrelated to the seller. So obviously, uncontrolled price method is the same price offered to related party with those prices that is offered to an unrelated party. Okay, that means um, there is no special, um, special, you know, special attention given or special, um, what's this? Um, special treatment given to a related party in terms of um, pricing. Okay, take note, guys. It could happen. No, it could happen, especially if um, a particular entity is so competitive enough in terms of their performance. Because at the end of the line, guys, take note, if they simply belong to a sim they simply belong to a one group of company, then their financial statement also will be consolidated. And therefore, um the at the end of the accounting period there will be elimination of reciprocal accounts. That means all intra uh, group the mga profits and losses will be eliminated. Pero for the sake of determining or um, evaluating the performance of each um, subsidiary or each um, company under a group of company, then they might actually follow this uncontrolled price method. Okay, uncontrolled price method meaning um, uh, whatever are the transactions made between a related party, it should be in reference no to a comparable goods sold in an economically economically comparable market to a buyer unrelated to the seller. So it's it means no um special treatment or special um price flexibility is made. Another is resale price method. So talking about resale price method, this method is often used where goods are transferred between related parties before a sale to an independent party is made. Okay, this reduces the resale price by a margin representing an amount from which the reseller would seek to recover cost and make an appropriate profit. So in this case, under resale price method, there is um, a margin that is given to a related party in order for that related party to cover the cost they had 
incurred in buying that particular inventory or buying that particular goods. Unlike uncontrolled price method, resale price method, it seems that the entity has given a bit of margin, all right? The bit of margin, a bit of margin to a uh, to the related party, meaning um, there's a bit of flexibility in terms of pricing. The third one is your cost plus method. So under cost plus method, this method seeks to add an appropriate markup to the supplier's cost. So again, um, um, under cost plus method, um, obviously, a related party is um, buying it from a particular supplier. So when that goods is transacted to another related party or to a particular related party, then an entity should simply give a particular markup. May it be in terms of percentage or may it be in terms of fixed amount. So for example, 5%. So let's say if they have acquired um, a single unit of inventory from a supplier at 100 pesos, so they will price it if ever it, it, if it will be um, sold to a related party by 5% or more than 5%. So that means um, it will be sold for 105 pesos to a to a related party. Not necessarily the same with your uncontrolled price method or not necessarily the same with your resale price method. Okay? So cost plus, there is, um, there is a specific markup that is given, no? that is added to the supplier's cost if ever it will be transacted or it will be sold to a related party. And then lastly is the no price method. So talking about no price method, literally no price is charged. As in the case of free provision of management services and the extension of free credit on a debt. So no price. So it just simply be, although no price transaction siya, but it is still required to be disclosed, no? as a related party disclosure because at the end of the day if they are related party and if they are under one no one legal entity that reports single consolidated financial statement at the end of the accounting period then all of its income and losses incurred and earned from another related party or another subsidiary will be elim eliminated naman din okay so so, ito yung mga prices, pricing policies that uh, an entity may use to a related party. Okay? So, again, um, that's it for our short discussion for related parties. So, it only reminds us that um, regardless if a person or an entity is related to a particular corporation or company or entity, whatever disclose, uh, whatever transactions they may have, no, they may go over, may it be including charges or not, such should be disclosed properly because of the reason that since they are um, since they are related parties, then therefore we could assume that there is there could possibly be a conflicting interest resting between these entities and thus required to be disclosed and be informed sa ang mga users of the financial statements or users of our financial statements and other stakeholders, all right? So, those are the basic concepts of our related parties. And if you have any more concerns, clarifications, do not hesitate to raise it during our virtual class. And um, let's try to answer your or clear that bubble of thoughts during our video lecture so again please don't forget to answer the the attached short assessment that is published through creeper to use or to make use our discussions here in related party disclosures okay so for more um, references you may refer to these um, materials for additional inputs pertaining to the subject matter. So that's it for our lecture for related parties. Thank you and have a nice day ahead.